everybody got their own ways, like how they want to grow, you know what I mean? So I guess I just want to take the bad route. Just go for anything and everything. If I know more money and I see somebody with them, I think I guess that's mine now. That's how I was. I just wanted to be a bad kid. <laughs> that's the honest truth. I was arrested for uh, you know, assault two and detrimental three drugs. I was on the streets since 12 years old, so I didn't screw up, I just turned to drugs. First it started with like cigarettes and then it went to like using marijuana and then I did ice. I guess I think that sometimes it's easier for us to think like, oh, these kids are just being bad and they're doing drugs and they need to stop. And we don't realize all of the, the struggles they're facing. I have a few youth who are six feet plus, big 300 pound boys. And service providers would say, they should just be locked up. They, they, they're too violent, they, you know, gangs, they're da 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 da. They are the ones I feel like everybody's given up on or is scared of. I got taken away from my family when I was young. My mom went dying made a lot of decisions that I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I used to do a lot of like dumb stuff, like take quarters from my grandfather's boy or something. He would lick me for that, like hardcore kind of licking. Like, and that's probably why, is it because he hit me so much. I, I just had a lot of hate. So I grow that hate, not to love, just, just to hate people. The whole beginning, a lot of people were just worried about uh, my mom's health and stuff and my legal issues. They were really worried that I might, you know, slip up if something happens to my mom. I was skinny. I was like beat up, you know. So I didn't even care. I was just like, yeah, I want it. I didn't notice how much it like does pull you in. When I was up in DH, I missed my brother's birthday and my older brother's graduation. That's what made me change. Like my family was my motivation because he looks up to me, my little one. I don't want him to go through programs like how I did and stuff. The sort of core of our work is our ability to develop a relationship with a young person, a young adult or a family, and then to figure out how to try enough keys to figure out which key might open the lock that is the door to their potential. Auntie Lani was one of the workers and she came and helped me with, it, with whatever I needed, no matter what time, no matter where I am. No matter where we come from, they're always there for us. I do work with the most difficult young people, but I'm basically doing it for my family, my kids, my community, because I don't want to see these young people becoming young adults and committing crimes that harm other people. They need to see that there's something better out there for them. I like going on adventures, so they'll take you like hiking and stuff. That's how it helps. It takes me away and stops me from thinking about too much things. Whenever we had to go somewhere, like to programs, or like AA meetings and all that stuff, she'd take us there. She's like, nah, she's helping us, you know what I mean? I just try to trust her, you know what I mean? I put all my trust and she never let me down, never. It makes me feel good that someone actually cares out there, that there's a lot of different people out here, not just the same people I've been around my whole life. And I sure won't like to, you know, let the people that have helped me so far, I don't want to let them down either. There's, I, I've never in my 20 years have ever met a young person who I felt like is a lost cause. They might mess up over and over again and we're, they can still come back, they can still join the program. I know Holly Keep has worked with 50, 60,000 youth. Um, I've met a lot of really difficult and challenging young people. I've met people with tremendous amounts of rage, violent adolescence, um, but I haven't met that person, the one that's incorrigible. I, I still believe that the failure there is not with them, it's me. Funders want to say, you know, fix them in 90 days. Well, that doesn't happen, you know. There are some kids that I've readmitted at least 10 times until they're ready. If we can find a way to connect them to the community, they will have the supports they need for life. And if we teach them how to build those uh, connections in the community, they can do it anywhere they go in their lives. Making the changes, like, to me, is the hardest thing because you can all, like, you could just roll back into your bad self, like, just like that. Yeah, I got so much people on my side that wants me to do good, especially myself. I want to do good. I want to um, 
get into tourism. Like after going to the programs and everything, I know I don't want to be in a room seeing walls. I want to be like out there adventuring and everything. I just want to be able to see her rest, you know, like be able to just sit down on the couch without doing any chores or anything, just kick back and relax. Because I want to, I really want to be successful in the future. And, you know, I'll, my intentions are to give back to the people that help me. I'm hoping I have my own family, my own house, my own car, and just living life how you're supposed to live it with responsibilities. And I hope that one day I can invest into someone else's life just as Ali Kipa and maybe make a change. We're kind of the in-between people. We're the ones who will never reject you, never eject you, never cause harm. It's those moments when uh, we are privileged to hear the stories. Uh, a young person gets thrown out by his parents. He doesn't believe anyone will care. He comes back to us. We're the only refuge he has. And when we say to him, we're willing to take you back in, he's got tears in his eyes. That inspires me. Where I can see the light come on in a youth and then be able to have the opportunity to provide an opportunity for them. I think people like Joniah inspire me, people who are willing to change and they're willing to do the work to really make a difference in their life. And With all the things that is knocking them down, they keep getting up and not give up. They act like they give up, but really aren't giving up. We're there to say, hey, what other thing can we do? What other step can, can we? And it's not holding somebody's hand. It is walking beside somebody. That's really important for me.